travel documents and get on the bus. Wait, wait, are James and Emma dating? Um, yes. I thought they were yes. the prom yes, together. Yes, they are. Yes. Yeah, they went to prom uh, together. Uh, uh, oh uh, actually, I watched it happen. She was landing and he ran out with flowers. Like, like this sign is like, wait, um, wait, you, 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 no, you're so fly, you're the bomb. Will you be my co pilot to prom? Oh my god. And oh. Rose is running. Can I shout out, Andre? Get at Gavir, Victoria. Get at Andrews, Michael. Get at Norville, Stuart. Get at Hobart, Christopher. Get at Silva, Ricardo. Get at Abuhami, Ravine. Anybody else that I didn't call? Amelia Earhart once said, you haven't seen a tree until you've seen it shatter from the sky. Okay, listen up. Welcome to Power Scholarship. You are considered the top air cadets in Canada, literally. And as you know, it's quite a, an accomplishment to get this far. Time is our enemy on this program. Most people, it takes them six or eight months to do this, and you're gonna be doing it in seven weeks. By next week, you'll be soloing. I'm sure you all heard about the one accident last year. The candidate under duress, she overshot the runway, and didn't do her proper procedures, and she crashed. She was unhurt, but safety is number one. As I mentioned to you, the scholarship is worth probably over $25,000 now. So you don't want to disappoint your parents and the squadron. You got to prepare your minds to receive the best that life has to offer, and doing what you're doing, what's better than that? So we're gonna just do a quick weigh in and then you're gonna be getting your flight suit issued to you and your course shirt. And that's telling me just about one-ish. We don't want to tell our weight no. on camera. <laughs> My sister uh, did this exact same course and uh, she completed it and got her pilot's license. And she was actually in the exact same hotel room as me. Oh, my God, here. That's Sharon, correct? No. Okay. Um, yeah. When I weighed myself this morning at home, yeah. without my uniform, I was just under. Okay. So. Just hold on. Just get on there. Put your, put your wedge down. Okay? Yeah. Now we're going to say because of your boots and everything. One of the guys gave me a nickname, Pork Chop, and just kind of followed suit since. Just got to embrace it, that's all. So, you want to be here for sure? Your, your yes, sir. Uh, aspiration was to actually come here. Nobody twisted your arm? No, sir. Nobody pushed you out the door here? I'm here because I want to be here. You're really excited you're here, right? Of course, sir. I'm really excited to be here. It's been a lifelong dream. Are you going to have any problems with your name? Or no, it's going to be getting along. So you going to have any problems with you? I don't think so. Maybe my country music, but that's about it. Uh, oh, 
Have you had any uh, car sickness? You can ride a bicycle okay? Yeah, yeah, I can ride a bike. Do you have any aspirations for anything? I want to be a pilot uh, because I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. Be able to like fly above everyone. It's uh, an amazing feeling. It's my sister's name tag. I was too lazy to sew a new one. I find that I have a great interest in aviation and I feel like I can move forward and do bigger and better things. And eventually, I think that the end goal for me would be to become an astronaut. A large part of the program is to put you in stressful situations and see how you respond. Do you have any questions about anything? Um, do you have any examples of stressful situations that they're doing? Is it like well, maneuvers or Yeah, in the simulator, traffic? they crash a plane on you. Some people break down. Oh. Um, well, they crash and they start crying and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they don't stop. So that's just to prevent any of that from happening later on? Exactly. All right. I handle pressure by eating a lot of junk food <laughs> and um, pretty much planning everything out. Because if I plan everything out and if something doesn't go to plan, then I know that like I did everything I could. Like I did all the, the hard work and stuff like that. Like if, if I don't get my pilot's license, I will know that I did everything I could to do it. So. It's really an incredible opportunity just to get your pilot's license, especially so young. 17 is so young. You'd never expect a kid to be getting a pilot's license. Morning, guys. So, you've uh, you've made it to the power program, eh? Um, I see uh, you look exactly like your sister from last year. You guys have worked really hard to get this far. What the flight center does is we're just going to lay everything out for you, and it's up to you guys to pick that stuff up and and earn your private pilot's license. So. The pilot in command has the final word of who's flying the plane at any time. If your instructor or the pilot in command says, I have control, what do you guys need to do? Control. You have control and release your hands and feet from the controls. If the pilot in command says, you have control, what do you respond with? I have control. I have control. And you put your hands and feet on the controls. Basically, I'm hoping that all of you guys should be solo by the middle of next week, weather depending. So in straight flight, wings are level to the horizon. Each wing is going to be the same distance above the horizon as the other one. There's pressure on everyone. It comes down from the officers, from the instructors, parents, families. I think the hardest pressure for me is definitely coming from myself. Before I went on course, I heard like so many horror stories about People failing, especially girls. There we go. So to step in, you just 
pop your foot up on I don't the think I would ever hold myself back just because of a gender stereotype, only because I would feel the need to, you know, make it go away. And then check for 30. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sometimes they splash a little bit. You've got to be careful that just gentle pressure so that you'll feel it. So I just feel that when girls are young, they don't really see their potential as easily, especially as teenagers. I and mean, I think that's probably the reason as to why there's not a whole lot who go on to get their licenses. But I think as they start to see that more and more are trying and more and more are becoming extremely successful, a lot more girls will be here soon. You know, cause issues. And that's your walk around, basically. We're all like shorter, so we don't have to worry about walking into the wings, really, unless the flaps are down, which is a bonus. Thank you, Alpha Papa. The 172 departing is in the right hand circuit. Right turn out northbound approved, clear for takeoff, runway 32. Thank you, Alpha Papa. Okay, so go full power, check our engine gauges are green, airspeed's alive, and climbing. Just being in the air for me, I think, is just a special place. Like, it's peaceful in comparison to everything else in the world. Really, you're just small. Looks like from on top. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna give you control. I want you to hold this cruise attitude. Keep everything nice and level. Keep your direction. You can every once in a while just check. You can use Bellwood Lake as a landmark, but um, also keep it at the heading of east. Right. I have control. You have control. Climbing to 2,100 feet, you have control. I have control. You have flash on this, make that way on my way to stop and go. You have control? I have control. My hands were like pulsating and they were like heated up. And like I never had that feeling before. This is why I, I want to do this course. This is why I love aviation because, like, the feeling that you get up there, the overview of it is just incredible. The thing I like the most about it is just the feeling of not being held to the ground, just being suspended. There was the one spot where you could see the shadow on the cloud. I'm that shadow. So I'll let you take control. So you have control. I have control. All right, and let's go 10 degrees nose down. Two thirds ground, one third sky. Descending, speed increasing. Okay. Okay. And 20 degrees and 30 degrees. All right, take a look right in front of us, 12 o'clock. What do you see? Oh, I see the runway right there. Hang on. Don't bring that nose up. Keep our nose down towards 60. Bring that nose up. Bring that nose up. All right, I have control. You have control. Right. A little bit of power because we ballooned a bit. Main wheels first. Magnetos off, thank you. Master off. Good. All right, what'd you think? Good. I liked it. I didn't know what the earth looked like at 7,000 feet until now. <laughs> so it's right side for both, right?
Okay, yes. yeah, just nothing I thought of left. Is that enough? It's parallel to the ground. It goes on the right side, apparently. What does? Everything. See, I was right. I don't know. James and I come from the same squadron, so we've known each other since we were 12 which is a pretty long time. And just recently this year, a couple months ago, we started dating. You just literally just go back and forth. Pretty okay, much. that's actually, okay, I thought there was something special that you had to do. I mean, it's also just something that can be difficult to manage when you try and juggle something like getting a pilot license. We're capable of kind of maintaining so things. It's uh, just a matter of learning it's to balance it. To go like in here. Oh. So I'll go like here, and then like later when I have time, I'll go over in the yellow. Like I'm trying to pull it through more, you know? Yeah, just like you got it. Just be careful, like, not to, like, pull too tight because then it will break. Oh, well, I pulled pretty tight. Crap. But, like, you'll know when you're about to break it. Wait, if you had a choice between Ferrari or Lamborghini, what would you get? A truck. I guess that's where it grew up. You get a you get a Honda Civic to pull more than a 3500 if you put, like, an 86-speed transmission in it. <laughs> Are you just saying all these things I don't understand? <laughs> I don't know anything about cars and trucks. <laughs> You'll probably find out more about them. Hopefully, yeah. That's pretty much all I talk about. <laughs> oh, your your first solo is gonna be so much fun. Is it? Oh my gosh, that's the best feeling. So See, I'm always nervous until I'm a couple hundred feet off the ground. Like I'll take off and I'll be like. I'll be with the pilot and I'll be like, okay, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. little nerve wracking. And then yeah. as soon as we get a couple hundred feet, I'm like, whatever. Yeah, but that happens, eh? Like, but then once you keep going up and up and up, like, you get used to it, right? Like, you know, it's, you know it's safe and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, dude, for so long. <laughs> That's gonna be like in a week, but like, oh, it's gonna be the best feeling ever. cloud is just visible moisture in the air. Clouds form through condensation on little particles of dust and pollen. On a cold morning, your breath is a cloud. It's moisture condensing on particles until they're visible. When particles in the air get enough water on them, the moisture gets too heavy and it has to fall. That's when you get precipitation. To a pilot, clouds are a kind of language. They can help us know what's happening around us. We're not only learning about flying, but we're also learning about how intricate everything is. This is so weird. <laughs> I've ridden a bike, but it doesn't do this. Gyroscopic procession. My God, it feels so weird. <laughs> working hard just so that, you know, we have an understanding of everything we need to have an understanding for. And we know what everything means and its importance and its functions. Plus, it's due tomorrow, <laughs> so. You think that's that, that's <laughs> Cambridge or you think that's Guelph? Yeah. Well, yeah. what way is that? 
That's oh. wet. The sun sets in the west. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at our VNC. Hold up, I got this. <laughs> Your, your, your map. And we just Google Map this address and look west. Uh, and Shh, that's Waterloo, okay? <laughs> okay, Google. Directly to the west of us is Cambridge and Guelph. Really? Is it's all the true? same place. It's, all, it's not all the same place. Well, Guelph like is like west and south. north, well, and Cambridge is west and west south. So I'm guessing it's Cambridge. So guys, um, an en route aircraft should, whenever possible, maintain a listening watch for an aircraft in distress on... 121.5. Uh, okay, Thanks. however, is it 121.5 on the aircraft receiver or 121.5? Uh, okay. What was, no, what was your other choice? The other one was 121.5 during the first five minutes of each hour. No, because during the first five, no, minutes, that's five <laughs> minutes, that's when you're testing the beacon. Right. So if you hear a blip on there, it's probably just someone making sure your beacon works. Right. Okay, so, so you want to you you be checking all the time. Right. What? No notes, no cheap papers. As soon as you get it, you can start looking it over. Oh boy. Oh boy. And I think we're more worried than they are, I would say. Well, they should be getting uh, really 12, 11 or 12 out of 14 to pass. It's a fail. That's sort of a pass. Fail. Fail. Oh boy. Supposed to just wait outside your room. Now we'll start down at this hand. See how 1205 is doing. They just, you gotta open up the blinds. Bed. Hey gentlemen, come on in. I just open the blinds up there. Make the beds up a little bit. You have so many towels in here. Oh, I see. You got three towels on the. All right. One for the prone because it's slippery, and then two. Yeah. So you need to hang the towels up on the. Uh, the hook. Yeah, you got to get them hung up. Okay, twelve oh eight. That's fine. You can stand easy. That's fine. Come on in. Oh, that looks good. Just get your wow, drapes so open nice. a bit there. Great. It's mandatory to know how to get out of certain situations that you get yourself into. Let's say you're flying and you get distracted when you're turning and then you go into like a steep turn and that turns into a spiral dive. You need to know how to get out of that so you don't crash the plane. A spin is basically a really fast movement and um, your aircraft is stalled, right? So that means that you don't have a lot of lift coming over and your nose is pretty much towards the ground. You can tighten your seat belt up. So I'd like you to hang on to the bottom of the seat if you need something to hang on to. I'm just gonna demonstrate a spin for you. Okay, and you're gonna recover? Yep, I'm gonna spin, I'm gonna recover. Okay, so we're gonna bring that up into the stall. Aggravated stall okay. and spin. Opposite rudder, neutralize. He's out of the dive.
At the point of stall, we're gonna add full rudder in one direction. Okay. And pull all the way back. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Is your stall full left rudder? How is that? What? Like a gyro spinning. Aggravated stall okay. and spin. Okay, one turn. Opposite rudder, neutralize, knees out of the dive. How was that? That was awesome. The first week, as you know, is very critical. We're going to be blunt about some things. And um, as I've mentioned before, we, we usually have good news and we have bad news. You've heard what this is all about, I'm sure. The uh, test, right? That's one thing. Phase. The test is only one thing. It's okay. actually a small component. Okay, so then I don't know the other components. Okay. Some people are saying they're getting stressed a bit now. Mm -hmm. You can expect to. Because from this point on, I'm sure as your sister said, and that you've heard, it gets worse. Uh, yes. We've had some things brought to our attention that they feel some of the cadets are socializing too much. All right? We've had comments from hotel staff, flight center staff, and we've noticed some things of cadets messing around, not focusing on the flight training. And um, sometimes in the past, we've uh, removed people from one flight center to another flight center. Like during the middle of course? You got it. Oh. Uh, because there's too many distractions. I, I understand that like it's a really intensive course, but I do think downtime for right. most of us, at least in small increments, is, uh, is important. If they need more downtime that is allowed on this course, then we're asking them to speak up, come forward, and they can go home, we'll get them picked up, or the parents will pick them up. That's about as blunt as we can get. I hear there were a lot of uh, unsuccessful people uh, in a test today. How did you think you did on the test today, the airlock test? Um, to be honest, bad because I'm like already bad with air law and I only had like a night to study because I was studying for P-Star so much in the checklist, so I didn't right. have much time to study. So that's something I have to work on, like time management. Yeah, basically you didn't do very good. Yeah. It's just a lot to study for for 20 questions. Yeah, it sure is. It's gonna get worse. Hopefully I passed. I think, I think I'm thinking I did. Well. Well, pass mark is 80%. Only six people passed. Right, I heard about that. Uh, you did fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. I, f I feel like I succeeded. I feel like I did well. Basically, you failed. What was my mark? Uh, it doesn't matter. The marks are quite pitiful, some of them. I wouldn't want to know my mark, to be honest with you. Okay. You passed the air quiz, by the way. You're killing me. <laughs> 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 Is there a, can you tell me a percentage or? A... No, I said it's like being Sort of pregnant. Sort of pregnant. <laughs> you either pass or you don't. Okay. You are or you're not. As a group, it sucked big time. Right. How do you feel about flying on your own in another few flights? Um, I think I'll be capable, for sure. And the next, I still need some more practice, obviously. I don't necessarily need someone to do anything for me. It's just having that extra person with you just as comfort is kind of nice, just in case you don't know something. I would definitely like uh, more practice with my landing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm pretty aware of what ATC is telling me and like just today like they were like you have to turn base now or you have to turn it half a mile like I was able to kind of pick up on that. Mm -hmm. Whereas sounded... I wouldn't have been like a couple of hours ago to be honest. <laughs> right. So yeah it's, it's incredible what you guys have done in a week that's all there is to it. Taking control is one of the things that they look for every student to be able to do. You know when you felt this and you told them to take over yeah. that's giving up control. They want you to take, keep control and take control. The only time examiner fails somebody ultimately is when he feels he's in danger. To be honest, before the interview, I was getting ready to drop out because it's getting too, it's getting too stressful. I don't think I'm gonna make the six weeks. 
I think I'm just, something's gonna have to happen. I'll probably end up having to go. It's, it's not easy. I don't have the experience. I'm coming out here fresh and it's just too hard. Nature needs balance, and it always needs to equalize pressure. That's where most of our wind comes from. Mother Nature is just trying to balance the highs and lows. I'm often unsure of what I'm actually capable of doing. There's a lot of times where I question myself for no reason at all. I think it's mostly just the fear of going home or being told I'm not good enough. And I think that's really what's speaking to me every time. I sit down and write a test or do a really difficult flight. I just don't want to disappoint myself or my parents or my friends, my squadron, by not being successful, I'm letting down so many people and I'm worried that maybe I'm not the person for it. When I talk to Emma, I can't start talking to her in a group situation and consoling her and helping her feel better. It's just, it's not something that you do. You have to be one-on-one. -on -one. So I've, I've not been able to calm her down lately. I can see it in her. And it's really hard to, it's really hard to see and it's starting to take a toll on me also. I'm trying really hard not to like sit beside her and and like be as close as I have been, because I want the officers to realize. But like, anytime I see her, it's she she just looks really like sad. I feel sad too. Yeah. All right. What else did you have trouble on today? Stalls, slow flight, climb and slow Keep flight. Keep on the slow flight. Go into slow flight. So you're gonna do hands checks. You need your height, your area, make sure everything's secure. And do your engine check. So primers off, masters on, landing light on, mags are on both, landing light on, carpet. Hot. Make sure full ridge, fuel's on. Okay, you gotta be confident about that though, right? Okay, yeah. Go into a stall, pull back, pull back, pull back. And then he goes recover, or I just recover. If there's a wing drop, I go opposite rudder, nose down, full throttle, carpet cold. Nose down. Nope. Yeah, you break the stall with the nose down. Okay. You back like this. Mm -hmm. Um, you hear the stall horn. You're not gonna go like this. You're gonna go a little bit forward pressure. Flaps up. Flaps. Slowly pulling back. Right, like you don't want. It's not nose forward. It's not nose down. It's. Just break the stall. It's like honestly, it's just under cruise. Back, back, because back. you have full throttle, you're going to be gaining speed. You don't want to be plummeting towards the earth like at a, a steep angle, right? And it's like one, like it has to be that quick, right? Okay. Um, what if he puts you into a spin? Anybody check the weather for tomorrow? No. Okay, it looks like Google. a good solo. What's the weather going to be like in Waterloo tomorrow? Mostly sunny, so you might hit a cloud and have to cancel your solo. Oh, you might hit a cloud and crash. <laughs> 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 oh no! Because <laughs> the clouds are so 
Um, <laughs> I was talking to Shan last night. He's like, man, I'm not gonna be able to make it past this next week. He's like, I, I swear, can't do it. I'm like, dude, just like, do you just need to ask your instructor about landing. Okay, oh. if we study like proper for the next hour oh. and forty minutes, oh, God. <laughs> do you, do you want to go to Tim's? Yeah, Where's Tim's. Yeah. It's uh, we drove past it. It's up. Uh, or coffee time. That's like second rate Tim's. Kind of the same yeah. thing. <laughs> I don't even want coffee. <laughs> Why do you want to go to Tim's? I just don't want to be in this just... hotel anymore. Yeah, I know you. Did you know how to do the weight and balance question? Like the the, the, the passenger and the pilot. Maybe. Oh yeah yeah yeah, I got that. Oh, did you not? I, I guessed it and I got it right. No way. <laughs> do you get it now though? Yeah yeah. Okay, that's good. You just it's like adding up everything. I think I'm studying more than I have like throughout my whole entire school year. <laughs> not bad. It's better than camp, like True. Trenton. Like you have to wear the like the really gross shorts. Yeah. And like shorts. You have to march everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So like we get we get freedom compared to other trend camps, but not compared to teenagers, no, we don't get that much freedom. You gotta do what you gotta do. Mike just texted me and he said James wants us to go to Tim's with him and Emma. Cover up. I'm gonna take a study break. You literally started studying. No. Okay, I watched a little bit of Pretty Little Liars. Exactly. But I was studying before. I was couch flying. Yeah, that counts. How's the weather today? Uh, it's pretty good. I checked the Metar, and uh, when I last checked it, the um, winds were at one three zero. So I assume we'd be taking off at one. Four. All right, let's say uh, you got a solo flight okay. and uh, your, uh, your instructor set you off to go solo and you're on your doing your thing or whatever. Yep. And uh, you're trying to start the engine, you're pumping the gas and all this stuff and pumping the primer, trying to get it to go. And uh, the line crew runs up to you going like this. What does that mean? What do you do? All right, uh, I wouldn't go, right? <laughs> so what, what does that mean? Uh, is there an engine failure? Engine fire, sorry. fire. Engine yeah. Fire, sorry. Okay, what do you do? Uh, for an engine fire? I would, again, not take off. Yeah, there's a procedure in the checklist for oh, okay. engine fire during starting. Starting? Okay, so you're going to keep trying to start the engine. Okay. And then... Let's say the engine starts. Okay. And it's still on fire. Well, it could be, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, oh, okay. So the engine right? starts, so then you're going to put the power to uh, 1700. There we go. Good. And then let it sit for two minutes, and then, uh, then turn it off and don't fly. Good. What's this? Uh, that's like the the drainer for the fuel. Good. What's this for? Okay, that is an, another air vent. Mm. Static. That would be. I actually have no idea. I no. Take a guess. Never, never say I don't know. Okay, so. Should always try to figure it out, and if you're not sure, then the answer is I'm gonna look it up in POH. Okay, so I would look it up in POH. Okay. It's a stall horn. A stall horn, okay. I, okay. So how this actually works is during normal flight, air's pushed into there. Uh, when you're at a high angle of attack, the air's approaching, like coming over the stall horn like that. Okay. It will actually draw air out of there and make that reed noise that you hear. Okay. Um, all right, I'm kind of curious to see how you answer this. What's this for? Uh, I would look it up in POH. <laughs> What I'm looking for today is not that you're making flight test standards or anything like that. What I'm looking for today is to see if you're going to be a safe pilot if you go solo by yourself. What about your landings? How do you think you did on those? Um, they're bumpy. If you could rate yourself uh, one being bad and four being good, what would you give yourself on your landings? Maybe like a, a two and a half. Yeah, I would give you a two-two. Okay, so there wasn't anything there that was completely unsafe. It wasn't like you're jolting off the side of the runway and, and banging around and stuff. But it either. Uh, you were pretty close to the center line. You stayed within 15 feet of the center line either side at all times, pretty much. And um, uh, remember, we're not—we're looking 
to make sure that you're safe. We're not looking for perfection at this point. You're going to be working on your landings when you're when you're doing circuits. So would we do a couple more flights before the solo? Would you say? Um, I'm not sure where you are in your training. I'd have to look at the sheet, but uh, we'll t I'll talk to Spencer and come up with a plan for you. So, okay. all, right. all right. Any other questions or anything? No, that's all right. No, all right. Good job. Thank you. I just want to like keep up with the pace of like everyone else you know like I want to be able to progress like as like the outline goes do you know what I'm saying a lot of people progress a lot faster and it's just because of how timing works and weather and planes and stuff and you'll feel really behind but you'll catch up so once you solo do you like keep soloing or do you like go up with your instructor after? no 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 you'll go for a few solo flights and then your instructor will go up with you again make sure you're still doing all your checks and everything right and then they have to prepare you for your cross country, obviously. So, yeah. I think if my older sister Julia wouldn't have done it, then I wouldn't have been as inclined to do this course. She told me that in tutorials, she would always kind of feel like out of it or confused because all the guys would be like arguing over like what is the right answer. Girls are more open to express their feelings that they don't know something because they they just want to know it. So they don't care like what the route is to get that to that answer. They'll tell someone they don't know something. Surprise! <laughs> well, we just surprised you. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a pretty good surprise. Like, are you happy? Yeah. Should I get the cupcakes? I think it's important for everyone to have a role model. If I had to choose a person, I'd say my mom. It's because she worked really hard uh, to get us where we are. And she was an immigrant too, so it's hard to come to a new country. And then like um, a couple years after she had to get a divorce and like she's working two jobs now or three just to like get me and my sister through university. She's pretty strong. And that's what like I inspire to be. You press both at the same time. Press what? Both the buttons at the same time. It's like deflating <laughs> as I'm sitting on it. You're supposed to lay down, apparently. <laughs> no, you, you have to lie down on the right or left side. No, but if you push them at the same time. What's the low setting? Oh no, it's too much now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, what? What's going on? I'm really nervous for my first solo. I'm pretty nervous for my first solo too. It's just like the fact that in a powered plane you can just go so much further. So I honestly feel like I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> like I just like, where's the runway? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna happen to me, but um, I'm sure like they won't let us go up until they like know that we're ready. So like I can like, I know I can do it, but there's still that nervousness that comes along with it. You really only have 10 flights, and two of which are sim flights. And it's not a lot of time to learn everything, and you don't necessarily get a feel. At least that's how I feel, is that I'm worried about not having a perfect feel about everything and not being able to know everything just because I haven't been exposed to it all yet, and I haven't had the time to get truly comfortable with it. How are you feeling? I'm pretty excited. We'll see how the landings go today, though. Yeah. Yeah. It should be all right. Um, it might be a little bit bumpy at this point because it's really hot. So yeah. I imagine there'll be a bit of turbulence. I think you'll be fine. Okay. I think what a lot of people nowadays struggle with is being independent. We need to be with somebody to do something at all times. Okay, and to the left, to the left. Good. Have fun. Good luck. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Okay? All right. Have fun. 
be in a couple minutes. Yep, see you soon. I'll be watching. I knew this morning when I got up and looked out the window that I'm going solo today, so I kind of had this little grin on for the entire morning. Thank you. Bravo, Quebec, contact tower 126, that's no zero, holding short. It's gonna be epic. It's a lot of mixed emotions when I'm alone in the air. There's a fear that there's no one there. Like if anything goes wrong, it's all on you, right? On the ground, this is Gulf Bravo Alpha Quebec on aim two for taxi. Or sorry. Scratch that. Bravo Alpha Quebec, stop. Bravo Alpha Quebec, you were told to hold short Alpha for inbound traffic. Sorry, Bravo Alpha Quebec. I was just waiting for it and waiting for it, and then she told me, and I was like, ah, this is the moment. Have a good I couldn't believe it was real. I'm like in this plane alone. I've only had like, I don't know, maybe 10 hours of flying, and I'm only 17. I haven't soloed an airplane before. I've just driven a tractor by myself once. I was. That was a little bit different, though. The tractor doesn't fly away. Squad 0073, say your request. Double four, and the gauge is green, airspeed's alive. I like this. Let's put some of that to right to run it. And there we go, I like this. Airspeed's alive, gauges are green. Rotate at 50. kind of forget about everything. You sort of appreciate life more. Carbon Dog Masters on Max Rock, both landing light on Carbon Dog. When you're up there alone, it gets really quiet. And like the wind, it becomes so much louder. Your awareness becomes so much heightened. Way too high. Let's get down. Oh boy, man, it's quite turbulent today. Okay, let's go for some more of that airspeed here. That nice airspeed. Here we go. Thank you, Kilo Foxer. It looks like you can make uh, Foxer in contact ground there, one to one death from weight. Congratulations on your first solo. Thank you, Kilo Foxer. Thank you. <sighs> this is nice. 
Do you wanna cry? <laughs> oh boy. It makes me wanna go back on what I had said last week when I said that it wasn't possible. Because now you kinda of, once you've experienced it, it gives you a change of perspective. My landings are uh bit shaky, but it was actually better than I expected. There we go. Oh my god, that was awesome. I felt free, like absolute freedom. Especially on this course, there's zero freedom. And uh, the only time I actually get freedom was actually just then when I soloed. Holy shit. Congrats, man. You look, you look a little sweaty. A little sweaty. I was nervous that entire time, man. I was shaking the entire time. I didn't expect that many people like there when I was taxiing back, but it was nice to have that. Like everyone was rooting for me, so that was really nice. Look here, just like Amelia Hartwood. Oh, oh, oh. All right, watch your head. Watch your head there. There's just so much more left to do that there's no time to like just relax and be like, it's okay, I'm done now, like wipe your hands. It's just, you gotta keep going. There's a lot of work. People have to really work hard still. There's no shortage of things to study. And there's a lot of material coming with the navigation, as you know, the flight planning you have to be doing. They want everybody to start looking at the map and doing some planning that way, and um, you know, cross country. I hope I don't get lost on my cross country though. <laughs> Now that we're flying by ourselves, we really have to be careful of the weather, especially on our cross-country flights. We're going to be up there alone for a long time. Understanding how weather works helps us have a little more control. It's the only way you can try to predict the future. On the ground, I really like thunderstorms but in the air, pretty scared of them. <laughs> there's a lot of downdrafts and there's a lot of precipitation. Um, these downdrafts can send you to the ground at 6,000 feet per minute, which is insanely fast, especially if you're only flying at 6,000 feet. You know, you go up there and you have all this confidence, you know, I'm a pilot, I can do this, I'm in so much control, I'm flying, but then you meet one and you lose every single bit of control. You can always steer your plane in a new direction, but you can't change what's happening in front of you. I was confident before. I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go solo. Let's go do this. Like, get me up there. Now it's like, I don't know if I can, like, I don't feel like I'm ready. I have a friend that I grew up with and since grade six, we've been pretty good friends. His body kind of refuses to let itself grow. He was going up to Montreal for a bone marrow transplant and they think that the body rejected the transplant. Just yesterday, it took his life. As much as I miss him, I, as painful as it's, it's, it's 
feels when I say it, it is for the best. He, he knew more about the hospital than he did anything else. And it wasn't really, like he, he was enjoying the life he had, but it wasn't a proper life for him. And sadly, it was, it was supposed to change for that. That was the trip point of the transplant. It was, he was supposed to get the life that he deserved. His celebration of life is on Saturday. I might not be able to make it there. I talked to his mother and his sister, and they don't want me to drop out of this for Matt, and Matt wouldn't want that either. It feels a lot harder to go through a day. I'll get up and I'll be fine and I'll go through some of the day and I'll be fine and then just something will come up in my head and I'll think of them and then it just, it goes right back into that cycle and I'll get upset. I was thinking about them today and the, the circuits when I was flying, it was, and that's the one thing that makes me nervous is I haven't had a moment yet where it's, I've sort of broken down like I have in the classroom and stuff. I don't want to get to that point where I'm losing mental control in flight. I don't want to get to that point. There are many times that you can trust your instincts, but there are many times that you can't. As new pilots, we're only trained to fly during the day and in good weather. The last thing we want is to be caught flying at night or in a cloud. If you're flying and end up in a cloud, your body could become very disoriented very easily. You think that you're flying straight and level, when really, you're slowly turning with increasing bank. You end up spiraling toward the ground, but at the time, you think that everything's okay. A graveyard spiral is when you go into a cloud and you lose your senses. You have to understand that you won't always know everything and your body won't always be right. It's a lot of responsibility, but it's important that you just accept that you're in control and it's what you do that determines what happens. Runway 08. Reduced visibility procedures in effect. Inform ATC that you have information Delta. Are you worried any of these clouds are going to turn into thunderstorms? These ones will. Do you think so? Oh, they're already towering cumulus. Yeah, the kind of alto cumulus castellanus. Towering cumulus. This is fun. We got some storms up ahead, so let's plan a new route here. Ideally, what we're going to do is we're going to overtake the storm, and we're going to go north of it, okay? Now, so, very now, similar to diversions. Now i got to go back. No, don't you know. No, you know. But I'm going this way. Now it's just getting me disoriented. We can use the same heading, pretty much, to go from here to here, right? Don't worry, we'll get around it. Oh, there's another rainstorm. See on the horizon up there? Yeah. See how it's darker?
You can see kind of like the line of the front, right where the cumulus clouds start to build, right in front of us like this. So, wait a minute. This would be the... Hold on a minute. This would be the colder, and then this would be the, the warmer? Warm front. Yeah, no, warm it's a cold front. warmer gets pushed up. Yeah, I know. I'm just thinking. So this would be the warmer on this side. Warmer? Oh, yeah, because warm is, is unstable. Mm-hmm. You can really tell that it's coming through too, because you, you can see the, the wind increasing and um, you can see it kind of come around like this. Just looking at the clouds, we know what's going to come next. What would come next? I don't know. It should be good weather. Yeah, good weather coming. After the front passes, it should be okay. Yeah, we good. Hey, hey, look at these guys. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> guys, seriously, look at those clouds. Can we, can we oh, my God, the lighting. Yeah. Can we just stay Lighting? Rain? Can we actually? Stay till it rains? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is how you learn. You see it in action. Now you okay. actually know where the oh. spotlight is. That didn't work at all. Wait, should we take one with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's better. Can you hear me? Minnie! Okay. Minnie! Stop with the anime! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you like us? Minnie! <laughs> Those cartoons will never love you like we do. <laughs> <laughs> I just miss you. Yeah. Too much at you. What do you want? Spicy yeah. chicken. Yo, Minnie, do you want to spit that? Yeah. Okay. Well, and you want yeah. to make it extra spicy? Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we can get a spring roll or we can get chop suey. Spring roll each or chop suey? I'd rather chop <laughs> suey. <laughs> Shut! <laughs> but you don't like drooling. Suey. suey. I'd like to order one hot and spicy chicken. <laughs> Extra spicy. Um, one vegetable lo mein. <laughs> Extra spicy. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, one uh, Cantonese chow mein. <laughs> and one sweet and sour chicken balls. <laughs> yes, that's everything. Mm, I know why. <laughs> why is it always me making the order? <laughs> that was the funniest attempt to order food I've ever heard in my life. Vegetable. How do you even pull it off? I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> <Vegetable>. No. <laughs> Vegetable. <laughs> I feel like you were like adopting her accent. You actually, <laughs> you actually got vegetable. Yes, <laughs> it's vegetable. It's English. I'm yeah. so full, but it's so good. Yeah. Right? Wait a little and then eat again. Okay, yeah. I ate too much at one go. My tummy hurts. Yeah, I know. Oh, so much. You'll be yeah, ready to eat in a little bit. We have the same here. Yeah, I'll get a total. Imagine using it. I have one. There you so go. I have a lion mane. There you go. I'll show you one. Yeah, day. you actually do. I'll like brush it up when I blow dry it. Would you be a lion or a lioness? I would be a lioness because I would want to marry a lion. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be the lion? Mm -mm. Lions are more like. Uh... But they just sit around. Oh, they're the kings. I like queens better. I'm a legitimate conversation. <laughs> I'm a feminist. I'm so sorry. I know. Uh, I'm an egalitarian. I'm just gonna move this. Shut up. I'm okay. Just it down. <laughs> I hate that joke. It's not a joke. I mean, serious. Oh my God, what are you well, I hate when people are like, feminism isn't about equality. No, because it focuses on like, like the inequalities that I'll women face. <laughs> yeah, right? That's why it's feminism, but it's so that women can be raised to the same standard as men. Not that like men should be degraded or anything, because it's like the issues that affect women affect men too. 
You're so philosophical. I know, I've been being philosophical. Like, you just go so deep. Sometimes I just don't feel like I get respected because I'm a girl. There's five girls and 13 guys, and it's almost impossible for us to all be together at the same time. Like, as a girl, you have no choice but to talk to guys at some point. And, and like, they don't talk to the guys, they just talk to us. Like, they pulled me and Namita aside. Remember yeah, Namita? Yeah, the, oh, yeah, yeah. the guys never get in trouble for talking to us. We get in trouble for talking to them and get accused of fratting with them. And it's like, they assume that we're only here to do that when that's not our point yeah, at I'm all. I'm trying to get my license, man. <laughs> like <we're>, Screw boys. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not going to go frat in a plane. like Or frat at all in this yeah, place. I, I really want a chicken ball. <laughs> oh man, it came out of nowhere, didn't it? <laughs> or you asked for it. You want a half one? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I kind of want more giggles, so. though. Me too. Okay. No, we'll half one. Okay. Do we even have any more giggles? We can just bite it and then I'll give it to you. Yeah. It's not true love. It is. I have to fly at 7 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> The solo cross country is the last major flight before getting our licenses. We have to take off and land alone at different airports and then come back. It takes about three hours. Once we do get our power pilot's license, we are allowed to kind of fly anywhere we want, so we need to be able to navigate. It is so much longer than any of the flights we've ever done and the curveballs are always being thrown at you, like weather and different airports, different runways, everything. When you drive a car, there's signs everywhere. For us, like, you have to figure out the signs beforehand. So you have to find, like, your route, and then say if something happens, like an engine failure, where are you gonna land? You have to be, like, 100 steps ahead. I took off and for the first half of the leg, I was like ready to turn back. At least now if I turn back, I know where to go. Whereas if I get further and further and like I'll have no clue where I am. There's like no one to like second guess you but yourself. Sometimes things start to look the same, or sometimes you want to convince yourself that what you're looking at is something that you know, when it might not be something that you know. In the back of your mind, you always believe, oh, I'll make it back. But the truth is that, you know, even the people who get lost and don't make their way back probably thought they would make it back. So I took off from my solo cross country and I had everything planned. Like all of my headings were calculated correctly and I was following my heading pretty well. And then I steered off of my track because I didn't think I was going the right way. For some reason, I, I may have second guessed myself or something and I just didn't know where I was. I just felt like so alone. Anything could go wrong. I figured out where I was, but getting lost made me late. The sun was setting really, really fast. And I just wanted to like hang on to that sunlight. So when I took off at Centralia for my final leg, I was really scared.
I had to get back because not only is it illegal to fly at night, but it's also really, really dangerous. You can't see anything. You can't see there are certain things that you can see in the daytime, like a water tower or trees or a lake. You can only see the parts of the cities and towns that are lit up. I saw all the towns, and then I saw like these big gaping black holes in between the towns, and I don't know, it kind of felt like I was flying like through the stars. What the fuck do I do? Hello, oh, Sarah Yankee Alpha Papa. I'm having trouble finding the runway. Yankee Alpha Papa, yeah, no problem. Actually, your heading looks pretty good. If you look straight down, you're over Highway 7 8 there, and that should lead you right towards the airport. Not sure if you can see that in the dark, though. Oh, sorry, Papa. Okay, I think I see the highway. Hello, oh, Terry. Yankee Alpha Papa. Um, currently at 3,600 feet. Attack okay, landing. Yankee Alpha Papa, tower identified. Runway 32, cleared left base. Oh my god. Okay. Ended one minute before it was legally declared nighttime. It was just really, really relieving, and I was happy to just be back. Call the Yankee Alpha Papa Ground Tech, the Alpha Cross from Ray 3 Flying when it's dark out made me see night differently. You just realize that there's a lot of stuff that goes on at night, you know, like you're sleeping, right? But the world's still going on around you. There's still lights everywhere. Probably one of the biggest reasons why I like flying is just being able to observe things that you wouldn't see every day. That everybody has their own stories, everybody has their own life, everyone has their own problems, their own ambitions, their own goals, their own uh, passions. And you kind of realize that when you're flying is because y y you can look around and like you see people driving down the 401 or you see people driving um, or on the golf course or swimming or going for a run or something, right? And you realize that there's just, it's infinite. It's just a, it's a cycle of energy that's just happening all around us. But we're so absorbed in ourselves that it's, uh, it's hard to explore, except for when you get that kind of view. You stop thinking as I, you stop thinking about yourself, but instead think about all the existence around you. And, you know, like you said, take time off and have that freedom. And you just get to get away for a while and really look at the bigger picture. For a second, you get to be an outsider.
The people that you meet on this course, you pretty much do everything together every day. Um, but you might not see them again after the course. Like, you can never see, like, the person that, like, maybe soloed the same day as you. Bad day, kidding me? I get to go home. Is this it? This yeah, is this is it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Ravine said he was gonna cry today. <laughs> I, I said I may cry, but if I was, I, if I was, I wouldn't be in front. Let me miss you, buddy. Miss you too. One of the biggest fears in life is a lack of purpose. Over the past seven weeks, I know all the cadets have built on and developed new skills and relationships that are gonna last a lifetime. A lot of what we did was taking cadets and challenging them, taking them out of their comfort zones. It is the toughest course in air cadets, without doubt. They all came here hoping to get wings and they were successful at that. And there were in fact some that wanted to leave and pack it in but they persevered. And I, I honestly believe each of your sons and daughters is different from being here this summer. You know the deal, Mom? No further questions? No, nope, I'm good. Make sure it's rich. We'll give her a little shot of primer. Master switch is on, car repeat's cold, beacon light is on. All right. Clear! And meter's charging, avionics power's on. It is, isn't it? It's not the same as flying in a big plane. I don't even know why I went all this way. There is so much different than an hour down here. Even the most confident pilot, I'm sure, does not have their most confident moments. You're always challenged and there's always something to learn. And I guess you're never really 100% secure. If I could talk to myself six weeks ago, I would say, be more confident. Life's gonna throw a bunch of things at you and you have to know how to deal with it and how to handle it. I landed an airplane in the dark. I've never done that before and I did it. I didn't crash. Anything's possible. I have control. You have control. So you have control. I have control. You have control. I have control. I have control.